If P is equal to 14 kilonewtons and L is equal to 6 meters, and the beam has a rectangular cross section 200 millimeters wide by 4, sorry, 100 millimeters high, what is the magnitude of the maximum bending stress on the beam? So this is a bending stress question, obviously. The equation for bending stress is that it's equal to my on i. And remember, if you're looking for the maximum, it means we need the maximum moment, the maximum y, which is the distance from the neutral axis, and we would minimize the i value, except that a beam is the same all the way through. So we'll just leave it as um, i on the bottom line there. So this is what we need to fill in. Okay, we're looking for um, sigma b max. m max is going to come from a bending moment diagram, and y max and i are going to come from looking at the cross section. So I'm going to start out by finding m max from that um, bending moment diagram. And in order to do that, we need to draw the free body diagram. So let's quickly um, draw that. So we know that P is equal to the 14 kilonewtons. So we can put that in the middle. And we can see that we have a pin and a roller on either end. And the um, force here is directly in the center. So what we would expect, let me just mark these in, is that um, since it's directly in the center, half of the force would be taken by one end and the other half would be taken by the other end. So if you want, you can go ahead and use your equilibrium equations to prove that. Um, but I'm just going to jot it in. So that means this is 7 and this is 7. And since there's nothing applied in the x direction, ax is equal to 0. So that's our complete free body diagram. I might just mark in our dimensions to make it easier in a moment. So we've got L on 2 on either side here, and L is equal to 6. So that means that each side is 3 meters. So in order to construct our bending moment diagram, um, I'm going to first draw the shear force diagram. So remember that the shear force diagram what we're doing is following the forces. So if a force goes up, we go up, and if a force goes down, we go down. And remember that these diagrams have to start and end at zero. So starting at the beginning here, we can see that immediately we're pushed up seven kilonewtons. Okay, I'm putting brackets here, all the units are gonna be in kilonewtons. Nothing happens through here, so it's gonna remain flat. At this point though, we hit a 14 kilonewton downward force. So that means that it's gonna push us down. It's gonna be seven minus the 14, which leaves us at negative seven. Again, nothing happens through here, so it's gonna remain flat. And then at the end, we're pushed up seven, which takes us back to zero. So as expected, we're starting and finishing at zero. All right, so now we should be able to draw the bending moment diagram. Oop, BMD. And the units this time I'm going to use for it oh, are kilonewton meters. All right, so remember that your bending moment diagram, it's calculated from the areas on the shear force diagram, as well as any moments that we have on the free body diagram. We don't have any, so it's just going to be purely based on this. And let me draw in the positive and the negative side of the diagram. So we know that this has to start at zero. And at the beginning on the shear force diagram, we're on the positive side. So that means that it's going to take our bending moment diagram upwards. And since it's a flat line here, we know that on the bending moment diagram, it turns into a diagonal line. It's got a uh, constant gradient going upwards. Um, you can think about it as every time you take an equal distance step across this diagram, you're adding on the same amount each time to the bending moment diagram. And in the end, you're going to get the, the total area that's enclosed in here. And we can calculate that as area of a rectangle. So it's a height of 7 times the width in here of 3. So that means it's going to reach 21. So at this point, we now end up with area on the negative side of the diagram. So that means it's going to take us downward on the bending moment diagram. And in fact, it's just going to end up being symmetric. Okay since it's the same amount of area in here. You can double check it if you want. It's going to be where you started, which is 21 
minus the area in here since it's on the negative side of the diagram. So 7 times 3 again, which should be 0. Okay, so that's our bending moment diagram. So in fact, what we wanted for our calculations up here for the maximum bending stress was the maximum moment that we see in the beam. So we can see that we definitely have a maximum on this diagram. It's up here um, of 21 kilonewtons, meters, sorry. So M max. Okay, and I'm gonna put these around it. That's absolute value signs. Okay, so even if you had the bigger if you had a bigger number, sorry, down on this bottom side, that's the one you'd want to pick up. Um, for your maximum moment, you want the absolute biggest number. All right, so that's that filled out. So now what we need to focus on is the cross section in order to get the maximum um, distance from the neutral axis and the I value. So it tells us in here that we have a rectangular cross section, which is 200 millimeters wide by 100 high. So if we draw that, it's going to look something like this. 200, 100 millimeters, sorry. Cool. So we know that the neutral axis goes through the centroid of our shape. So it's going to be somewhere here, right? NA for neutral axis. Um, and what we're looking for for Y max is the furthest distance that we can get away from it. So since it's a rectangle, we know that it sits halfway um, between the top and the bottom. So the furthest distance that we can get away here, which is Y max, is going to be half of 100, so 50 millimeters. The I value is the other one that we need. And for a rectangular cross section, the equation is BD cubed on 12, or sometimes it's written as BH cubed on 12 as well. Um, B is this distance here of 200, and D is the depth, or sometimes it's written as H because it's the height um, of your beam. So let's put this in meters. So it's going to be 0 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.1 cubed on 12. And this works out to about 1.67 by 10 to the negative 5 and the units since everything was in meters it's going to be meters to the power of 4. So all we need to do now is substitute all these values that we found back into our stress equation. So the maximum moment we said was 21 um, kilonewton meters so I'm going to put this into base units so I need to times it by 10 to the 3. We then need to multiply it by our, our y value, y max, which was 50. Again, put it into base units, it's going to be 10 to the negative 3. And divide by our i value. So everything is in base units, which means that I'm going to get a stress returned in pascals. And it's about 63 by 10 to the 6. Now, all of our answers are in megapascals, so in order to go from pascals into megapascals, you need to divide by 10 to the 6, so that's just going to leave us with 63 MPa. So looking now for this answer in our list, and we can see that we do indeed have it, so that's the answer to this question.